Um, you know, I managed to persuade people in, in Bangalore and Kerala and uh, various other places for our contractors to accept Bitcoin. It was a difficult conversation. They have a long history. And in their history, every time a white man came to them and tried to show them a new type of currency, it was usually crappy beads. And they usually had smallpox on. So you can imagine the uh, type of response you get when you go to a contractor and say, hey, I got fake money. You want fake money? <laughs> they look at you and they say, yeah, white boy. That's me tried before. And we still remember, especially in India. And I'm half British, so I have to try to carefully. Anyway, um, the trick was, once I was able to persuade someone to take a bonus payment, not their main payment, a bonus payment, because then they didn't have anything to lose, and got them to convert it to local bitcoins on the other end. What they realized is that instead of paying a 5% fee to PayPal, they made the 5% premium on local bitcoins. Just like that, the conversation changed. And so these types of little tipping points are going to happen all over the world. So what I was saying, reset your expectations. Another thing I, I think we need to understand is that humans don't think on a linear scale. Sorry, don't think on a linear scale. They don't think on a logarithmic scale. We have great difficulty appreciating exponential growth in any technology, in any aspect of life. Um, we don't realize what happens when you add exponential growth. Our brain is unable to extrapolate that way, at least not intuitively. Bitcoin doesn't have a linear growth model. It simply does not have such a growth model. It has two growth models. One, it dies because of a horrible bug or something like that. At which point, a thousand altcoins rush in to fill the gap, and we reboot and start again with a new name. Uh, not such a bad thing to happen. A lot of people are going to get burned, but the main technology isn't going anywhere. Scenario number two, Bitcoin survives. And by surviving, it thrives. And in that scenario, we're looking at very significant adoption within the next two to three years. This isn't a 10-year game. You know, when the big wants to say 400 billion valuation is not out of the question, I think they're being conservative. Because we keep thinking of it as a stock, and our brain can't wrap around the idea of, okay, it's 367 down. Have you ever bought a stock for $100,000? Anybody here? Have you ever seen a stock listed for $100,000? Yeah. Berkshire Hathaway. Berkshire Hathaway. BRK. Okay. Most don't do that. Why not? They're split. They split. Exactly. Because there's a psychological barrier to high prices of stocks, right? So if you're an outlier, a couple of orders of magnitude above all the other stock prices, People don't buy you just because of a psychological factor. Unless you're I have a way that's one exception. But we can't do the stock splits. We can only do division with Bitcoin. So if you think of it from that perspective, a hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin is not at all weird. It is absolutely doable because we're not going to split. We're just going to keep going. The important thing is to realize at four billion dollar valuation. Bitcoin is a smallish stock and a piddly currency. Four billion is not a monetary base for a currency. Four billion is a monetary base for a penny stock. We have a long way to go. So a 400 billion valuation for the first super national currency that actually helps fulfill certain strategic goals of some of the richest nations on Earth? Easy. Unless, of course, we die on the way there. So those are the two scenarios. Either Bitcoin collapses in a spectacular uh, crash, primarily because of an internal bot, not an external situation, or it becomes a currency. And as the first supranational currency, its valuation cannot be any less than $400 billion. It doesn't make sense. So when the Bitcoin wants to say that, I think conservative. I have been consistently trying to reset my expectations as to the trajectory of Bitcoin. And the reason for that is because we have no historical parallel to this. And that's very important to understand. We've never done this before. Not only that, this has never been done in the history of humanity. And so if we do it, it's all new. We don't have the analytical tools to look at Bitcoin as a stock because it's not a stock. 
it is an asset class. What type of asset class? A cryptocurrency asset class. And how do cryptocurrency asset classes behave? I have no clue. Give me two years, I'll answer it then. We don't know yet. Yes? So one of the biggest things that's happening um, with governments, and it is exactly what you're saying, is that right now there are there's a form of capital controls within the United States. If I, if I want to transfer more than $10,000 out of the United States and keep more than $10,000 in a foreign bank account, that's a problem for U.S. citizens. Yes, if you have more than 10,000 and try to transfer more than 10,000, you're going to run into problems. Bitcoin yes. avoids that problem. So, yes, it does. So, and there are various other forces out there that are saying that Bitcoin needs to be regulated. Where do you see that happening? I think all of those forces will continue to say that Bitcoin needs to be regulated. And they will be as successful in regulating Bitcoin as they have been in ending piracy, <laughs> drugs, <laughs> prostitution, and free speech. So how about to happen? How will governments fight against their capital control plans that they have, right? So how will uh, countries that are currently have currency controls will adapt? Or they will not adapt. But Bitcoin happened, and there is no question of it unhappening. So that's what a supranational currency does, and that's why I'm saying reset your expectations, because the kind of accelerator it provides in times of crisis is incredible. If the 2008 crisis happened today, Bitcoin would be playing center stage across the world in the most massive capital flight you've ever seen. We've all ever seen. And as Argentina is, is teetering on the brink, sitting on top of a large, educated, literate, infrastructure-connected, electricity-connected, smartphone-owning population, they're about to jump ship. And when they do, it's going to be big. And you're going to see these little explosions happen across the world. China was first. India is following very closely behind because of serious problems with the rupee at the moment. Most of Latin America has been on this path for 30 years. What they didn't have is the Red Cross of currencies to parachute in and take them all the way to safety. Now, they do. So, under these circumstances, all you need is that tipping effect to occur in country after country after country. And it's not going to happen as a national adoption. No government is going to adopt Bitcoin. Okay, maybe Singapore. Maybe in 5, 10, 15 years, some country might be brave enough to decide, oh, fuck it, everybody's got Bitcoin anyway, might as well call it the currency, right? That's not how it's going to get adopted. How it's going to get adopted is that we are already making Bitcoin the currency of our country, the internet. That's the country that adopts it as a currency. What it means is that we can now have, as a country, the internet, we can have our own currency, and we can connect with everybody else in the world who has our own currency, and just ignore them. Just completely ignore them. And that's what's going to happen in my mind, which is you're going to see these communities of Bitcoin merge in different countries in isolated pockets. A city here, uh, you know, 10% of the population there, etc. Some remittances, some capital flight, and overall that will bubble up until Bitcoin is a viable supranational currency, and then everything accelerates. Okay, let's see. Let's go in here. Yes, sure. Well, I mean, everything you're saying sounds great, but um, I have to come back to the fact that it's in the it's in the survival interest of the United States government to kill this, strangle it, and cripple it, and. They have been successful in, um, in digital piracy, but they've been, done a pretty good job uh, keeping it to a dull roar and trying, I mean, I read something, they're gonna have um, education in the elementary schools now. About they, piracy? They're trying to tie like, the concept That's to because they're moral lost. behavior. You, you see, here's the thing. The reason piracy is dying today is because of Netflix. Because we have viable but, ways well, I of agree. downloading I agree. content. It's when we didn't started. have viable ways of downloading content, we did it our own way. Right. So what they did was they pivoted 
co-opted and gave consumers what they wanted, so consumers backed off piracy. That's what's happening. They didn't win a single battle. And right. certainly but look at the war on drugs. It's still it's an instrument for uh, social oppression, for lack of a better term. There's a huge community of people whose only job is to maintain that infrastructure. Absolutely. And they can do the same thing here. Yeah. And they can make it difficult. They can say, look, they can tie it to Silk Road, which they probably Governments can get really, really nasty. Yeah, that's and true. our government will get really, really nasty. Against certain people in the Bitcoin space, not the vast majority of people, but against certain people, they will get really, really nasty. And in the end, it will work. Because the bigger It'll power be very here, along the way, is what I'm saying. Yes, yeah, so but we're talking about uh, a completely different scale. So my basic axiom is this. If you have a decentralized system and it competes against a centralized system, even with interference, a heavy interference, the decentralized system wins every time. Why? Because it delivers more value to everyone in the network than a centralized system. Every time. In every decentralized system, that has been the case. So I'm not really worried. Because at the end of the day, what you don't realize is that as we fund Bitcoin, we defund yeah. the government. That's an important consideration. 